All right, welcome back, everyone. Today, we're doing a very special interview. Today, I am interviewing Rob Weedoff. He is the voice of John Marston in Red Dead Redemption and Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, two very popular games that I'm sure you've heard of. And uh, I have the opportunity to talk to him today. He was uh, kind enough to give me some time. So thank you for joining me, Rob. Uh, it's good to hear from you. Hey, man, thank you so much for having interest in having me on. I, I really appreciate it. And um uh... This is awesome. Yeah, of course. Really great. Of course. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm just wondering, what have you been up to lately? Because, you know, it's been a while since you've been doing some acting. That uh, Red Dead 2 is your last game that you uh, acted in as John. And uh, that was about five, five, uh, five or so years ago that released. And since then, um, uh, people haven't really heard uh, much, of, much from you, aside from some other interviews that you've done with some other YouTubers and such. So uh, what have you been up to lately? Well, Gosh, it's it's hard to believe that it's been almost five years. It, I guess it has, though. That's wild. Um, yeah, I've been I've been hanging out with my wife and my kids. That's good. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've been really enjoying that. And um, I did, I always had a job throughout the process of uh, Red Dead Redemption Two, which was shot in New York. So I live in Indiana. I would fly back and forth for uh all of that work and i and i missed a whole lot of my wife and my kids lives because i was gone so much so ever since i've been back i've really enjoyed hanging out and um i i've had a construction job throughout that entire process which which i really enjoyed but i got an opportunity to have another an, another job and I'm doing that now. I'm working at a at an auto body, like a collision center. Okay. And I don't do, I don't do the work on the vehicles, but I'm I'm almost like a secretary. That's basically what I. Am. <laughs> but I'm really enjoying it, and uh, it's so different. But it's I, I want to tell you something. I'm 46 years old, and I was doing concrete for the last eight and a half nine years, and that really really wears you out so i'm excited um i've been in the last few weeks a couple months actually um uh, really been stressing out about this change because it's a big change for me and i think it's a change for the better but it's uh it involves learning a lot about computers you know a lot about computers i don't know a lot about <laughs> computers um so it's been it's been uh it's been a lot but it's going to be really great I think and uh it's going to give me I guess an opportunity to continue to to provide you know mm -hmm. in uh a less a less physically stressful way so I'm excited about it. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. So you went from construction to uh, to this auto body uh um job now. That's interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you had a lot of various jobs uh, over the years, right? Because um, it's not just acting or construction. There's a lot of different things you've tried. Uh, apparently, you, you were into aviation at one point. Yeah. Well, okay. So I've always thought it would be really, really cool to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. I, I just really thought like that's something I really would like to do. And so when I was living in Los Angeles, I was a bartender. And uh, there was a guy that came in all excited and said, I just flew a plane. And I knew this guy, but I didn't know him real, real well. He was, he was kind of one of the regulars at this bar where I worked. And I said, what do you mean you flew a plane? And he said, I flew a plane. And I had a guy with me. I had an instructor with me, but I flew that thing. And, I, and so I said, you got to tell me more. Because I thought, yeah, I know you. I know that you're not. I know I knew him well enough to know that he wasn't like in school to mm -hmm. be a pilot, but he just so basically what happened was um, you go down to this. It was the Santa Monica Airport, and if you walk in, they have a they have a, a school there. Um, you walk in and let them know that you want to be a pilot, and if you give them a hundred dollars, I don't know what it is now. This is probably ten years ago. They'll take you up in a little plane, like a little Cessna, and uh, you fly it. So 
I got to do that too. I was like, man, I'm doing it. And so I really thought once I did that and thought, oh my goodness, I have actually flown a plane, not on my own, obviously. Um, but I thought I'm doing it. I'm doing it now. I've always had a whole lot of interest in it. And now I've actually kind of done it. But what I realized is I think it costs like a hundred bucks per hour even as you're in the school, like that's really expensive. Also, by the time I would have had enough hours. So I guess airlines, mm -hmm. they look at how many flight hours do you have? Mm -hmm. And I think you need like 10,000 to even be considered to fly any planes commercially. And uh, I thought, I don't have that kind of time or that kind of money. <laughs> and there are so many younger people than me. What airline is going to hire? It would have been about now, probably, that I would have been able to get that many hours in. Oh wow! In that long, I don't know. Uh, but I just, I it was, it was uh, something that if I could go back in time, actually, you know what? If I could go back in time, I wouldn't change a thing. I'm, I'm probably the luckiest person in the world. I, I really feel that way. I've been so fortunate, but. Let's say I didn't have the the experiences that I've had. If I could go back in time, I would have gone to school to be a pilot. I think that would have been so cool. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. That's, that's interesting to hear about that, actually. So it was just like a time commitment. Is it really all it really was in the end? I guess time commitment. Yeah, that and and how do you come up with all that money? I mean, you know, I had a job, mm -hmm. so I had a hundred bucks to do it once, but. To do it as many times as I would have needed to do it, 10,000 times, that's a lot of money. So I thought, maybe this isn't right for me. A lot of pilots are, are people who were in the Air Force, and they got hours while they were, while they were in the Air Force training. And, and so it makes sense, you know, that it would be that way. And then, you know, obviously a lot of pilots are, are, are not from the Air Force. But I think that if you can get those hours in, if you're interested in being a pilot, Get those hours in when you're young, not when you're, I don't know how old I was. I, I was 35 at least, or probably. That's too late. It's too late. So anyway, that was my experience, but I did fly a plane. It was awesome. That's interesting to hear. I, I didn't know it was like that, huh? Yeah. Probably more now. All right. Um. Well, yeah. So uh, let's see. So aside from that, what kind of hobbies do you like to do in your free time? What kind? Of, what do you like to do? Um, honestly, I I've always loved when in the summertime. I love being on the water. I love to water ski. Um, I love to be out with friends on a boat. That's that's probably when I'm happiest doing you know fun stuff on the lake. But uh, now you know. I can't do a lot of things that I used to want to do because now I, you know, I have kids and I have a home that needs upkeep. And, um, we're, we're lucky that we've got a, we've got a pretty big yard. I love it to have some space. I've never really had a bunch of space in my, in my entire life. And now I do, but you got to take care of it. <laughs> so there, you know, we got a lot of trees and we got a lot of grass to cut. Yep. The trees are always dropping limbs and I, I enjoy yard work. I do, but that is kind of what I do. I, you know, I, I try to get my kids to help me and enjoy being outside with them, you know, but that's, uh, I don't have a whole lot of hobbies. I, I really don't. Cause I don't have time for them right now. I, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can, I, I can, I guess uh, now I can understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so one, one thing that I'm going to say, start doing is because I was doing construction for so long, because that is so physical, I stayed in relatively good shape, but now I'm not going to be paid essentially to work out. I'm going to have to do that on my own. So I, I guess working out hopefully will become one of my hobbies so I can try and stay in shape. We'll, we'll try and do that. I, I really hope that I can figure that out, but sure I can. All right, that'd be that's that's good to hear then. So yeah, it, it'd be uh, nice to have an excuse to um to get some exercise and everything. And uh, yeah, I, and I can relate a little bit with the whole yard work thing because we also have trees in the back, and the, the raking is just crazy every, every, every fall. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
All right. So um, let's talk about uh, your time uh, living in L.A. and how you got into acting. Um, you want to just kind of tell us about how that all started and everything? Yeah. Yeah. So it's funny because I I never was real interested in acting my entire life. I, I went to. Um, I went to Indiana University, which is a really great school, not necessarily for acting, but uh, music. I've always loved music. I just never thought of myself as a performer. It really in any way. I just never thought of myself as like, I want to do that. I That's what I want to do. I just really have always enjoyed it. But even when it was right there at my fingertips, I never, I never really had the itch to get involved with it. So um, graduated from IU, Indiana University. I don't know if I said that before or not, but people may not know just IU. Anyway, yeah. um, so... My then girlfriend uh, moved out to Los Angeles just for the summer. She graduated right on time at the end of her senior year of college. We were in the same class. I didn't graduate right on time. I graduated at the end of the summer after my senior year. I had a couple of things I had to finish up. <laughs> but so she, uh, when she was in LA, I went out there when I finally finished up and, and, visited for a weekend a week however long it was i don't know but while we were there we ended up being extras on young and the restless which is a soap opera <laughs> um because her roommate that she lived with out there worked at cbs i think in casting i don't know what she did but we went to visit her at work at the CBS building on the C, you know, the, the whole lot there. And she walked us around and we ended up being invited to come back the next day to be extras on young and the restless. And we thought, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. So while we were doing that, which was really weird, you know, you're in this place where we were in a coffee shop on the show. So anybody that knows the show, I think it's still on TV. There was a coffee shop. And we were extras in the scene. And so we had to sit there and pretend like we were talking to each other, but you can't make any sound because then obviously it, it, it messes up the dialogue that's written for the characters. So we were mouthing conversations to each other and it was really awkward, but also became very difficult because obviously she and I knew each other really well. We started mouthing things that she she would understand what I was saying and I would understand what she was saying, but we didn't want to laugh and, and like ruin the scene because there's these two people sitting at a table acting like idiots, whatever. It was, it was fun, but <laughs> also really weird. Anyway, that was my first real experience with acting, even though I, you know, whatever. I guess you can say I was acting, but I wasn't hired for a role. And anyway. Uh, so that happened. It was fun. It was cool. I didn't think much of it. But then um, probably a year later, I found myself living in Indianapolis, and I was working a construction job there. And the, the my boss said, hey, you've been here for almost a full year. You've got two weeks of paid vacation. If you don't use it, you're going to lose it. It doesn't roll over. So you need to plan a vacation or, you know, you don't have to go anywhere, but you don't have to take it, but you can take days off and not get paid for it. I want you to be aware. And I said, awesome. And I, I was completely unaware up until that point. So I went home that night, told my roommates then, hey, you guys got paid vacation. Let's go somewhere. Let's go on a trip. Let's go somewhere. And they had all used theirs already. So they were like, yeah, man, shoot. Wish you'd have known. We'd have known earlier. You could have come with us wherever, you know. Anyway, I decided I'm going to go back to LA. I don't know what to do. I'm, I've never been on a vacation by myself, you know, at that point. I don't know that I've ever been on one since by myself. Well, I, I guess I haven't. But I did. I went to Los Angeles. When I got there, I called CBS. <laughs> I looked, I Googled it called a number to CBS and said, yeah, can you connect me to Young and the Restless? They did. 
And I said, hey, my name's Rob Weedoff, and uh, I'm in town on vacation, but I was an extra on your show uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, whatever, and I want to do that again. Can I come in tomorrow? And they said, uh, yeah. And so <laughs> the crazy thing about this, I got, I somehow got in touch with the right person, and that person said yes. It's It's insane, that story. It's just not even... I can't even believe that it happened. If somebody told me that that happened, I'd say, that's not true. Uh -huh. It's not, that's not how that goes, but it did happen. And when I got there, I saw some of the people that I had seen the first time I did it. And, uh, I was an extra again and enjoyed the experience this time. One of the directors, and I don't know how that all works. Cause the guy said, I'm a director, but our other director is watching the, the monitor in another room, but he really wants you to be on the show as a bartender. Like a, you will have a role on the show. And I said, Oh yeah, cool. That's awesome, man. Thank you. And tell him I said, thank you, but I don't live here and I'm only on vacation. I don't, I don't have any interest in being an actor. This is just kind of something for me to do while I'm here. And they were like, all right, well, yeah, all right, great. I'll let him know. And they came back to me two more times and said, are you sure? This is a huge opportunity for you. Do you do you really not want to do it? And I at, like the third time I was like, man, I'm I really appreciate it. I don't live here. <laughs> it's so I know this is all like really not believable at all, probably, but I promise you, this actually happened. And so finally the day was over and I said thank you and left and whatever. And uh and then realized. Six months later, here I am driving to L.A. because I thought, you know what? I think I do want to try and be an actor. That was kind of fun. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to do it. I'll just call Young and the Restless again and tell them I'm here and I'll be their bartender. <laughs> this time when I called, I never got through to the right people. They were just, you know, like what would happen if, if you call there? They'd just be like, I'm sorry. You got to go through different channels. You can't okay. just call. But, but. Unbelievable that I had that opportunity when I really wasn't interested in acting even then. I had a really huge opportunity. That would have been a great way to get my foot in the door for a lot of different things. And I just said, no, I don't, because at the time I wasn't interested. But anyway, I ended up living out there long enough. I got an agent, started doing auditions for commercials, uh, had some luck with commercials, actually. Ended up doing like 20 of them or something, which was fun. And at the time it was good money, but it wasn't what I had moved out there to do. I didn't want to be an actor that only worked in commercials. I wanted to do movies and, and TV shows. And I wanted to be, you know, an actor that, that was working like anybody would want to be that moved out to LA to be an actor. Anyway, one of my auditions happened to be for Red Dead Redemption. And, and that worked out. And that's been Honestly, that's why I feel like the luckiest person alive. That has been from the moment that I first went into the studio and met these people from Rockstar until this very moment. It has been so, it has been such a cool, positive experience. And I'm so fortunate I've been able to, to enjoy it. It's really, really been cool. And I honestly, I don't know. I mean, I know that my story is crazy. Of like, how did you get interested in acting? How did you do it? Whatever. I don't know that that's like, just do what I did. <laughs> yeah, it's very unique circumstances. <laughs> it's just wild. It's just, I mean, I just feel like I've, I've won lottery ticket after lottery ticket. Really, I just did. It just was enough to make me think like, this is possible. It's possible. It's already happened in, in different ways. It's already happened. I've had enough to encourage me to keep moving forward. And so who knows? I mean, I, I've really, really enjoyed the work with Rockstar. That's that's obviously the, the biggest work I've done. Um, I, but I don't know if anything will, will come from it or or if there'll be more of it from Rockstar. I have no idea. But I'm really glad that I enjoyed all the experiences i was fortunate enough to have for sure all so right we'll see yeah I'm glad to hear that you had a good experience with that and everything it's it's, a, it's an interesting story how you how you got into everything it just everything kind of just fell into place in a way right um yeah i mean yeah 
I think that, and, and it kind of is, it's just weird. I don't know. I guess I didn't know. I, I had no idea. Nobody ever told me like, no, you can't just call there. They're not going to give you the right people. You can't do that because everybody, that's what everybody thinks. And I, and, and I would say that now too, like, no, it doesn't work that way, uh -huh. but it did. It did that time somehow. Um, but at the time that was enough to encourage me to keep, just keep doing it. Just keep trying. One thing I know for sure though, is that even if someone does tell you, you can't just call there, that's not how it works, whatever. It doesn't hurt to try. I mean, I, it, it's likely that it's not going to work out the way it did for me, but anybody that's in a position where they're interested in trying to do something, anything, whatever it is, if you tell yourself, it's not, oh, that's not going to work. Uh, and I'm not, I mean, I'm not even going to try that because it's just not going to work. It's not how, that's not how it happens. And you say no, and you don't try, then you're right. The answer is no. It's, for sure, no. But if you try, who? I mean, someone has to say no, or they might just say, uh, yeah, yeah, you're in town. Yeah, come on in. You can work tomorrow. That's what happened. So you, ne you never know for sure. If you say no, though, then you know for sure the answer is no. Yeah, that's, a good, yeah that's a great way of looking at it. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I think so. Mm hmm so so yeah it's it's like um if you if you kind of just don't put yourself out there then obviously you, you know you're never gonna make it so a lot of people kind of have that mentality and i guess that's a lot, why a lot of people just don't make it very far in their in their hobbies or their career or whatever yeah well and i think too a lot of times um people you know with acting like for me acting is is something that honestly i i feel like i won the lottery i got lucky I honestly got lucky, even with Red Dead. I got lucky. They could have cast so many different people who would have done a really great job, and they chose me, and, I'm, and I love that. But it's, I'm lucky that they chose me. Um, I did the best with the opportunity that I could. But so you, you do have to, you have to try, and you have to also recognize that uh, sometimes, even though it's a dream of yours, it takes work. It takes determination. And, you know, you can't just walk into wherever. Say you want to be a painter. You can't just sit down in front of an empty canvas and, and paint something that everyone in the world says, oh, my goodness, that's beautiful. It's not, it's not likely to happen. You have to, you have to put in work. And I think a lot of people get discouraged by whatever work they realize they're going to have to do and think oh no i don't want it that bad you know so i think that's a big part of it for a lot of people too all right so um regarding the role right um so it was kind of like a blind audition you didn't know who you were auditioning as when you auditioned for john and red dead you had no clue that it was even for red dead right right yeah no and you know, my agent called me and said we have a an audition it's called untitled video game project we assumed that it was it was going to be some kind of a promo or commercial for a video game that had already been made but, because i mean what does that look like when people cast a video game we didn't know my agent didn't know i'd never thought about like what would that look like i didn't even know you know really much about games because i'm not much of a gamer myself um, I don't know that I even really thought about like, are these video games like it's someone's voice, but are they actually walking around in performance capture suits and 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 acting this stuff out? That's that's how we did Red Dead and the whole series, and that's how they do the majority of of AAA games now. I it's uh, it's a it's a production, and it's not just voice acting, right? So. It's um, it's one of those things where yeah, we we didn't have any idea what it was for, what it was for at all. But it wasn't. I don't think it crossed my agent's mind or my mind that it was for a role in a video game. Uh, turns out we were wrong, I guess. 
All right. That, that's pretty cool. So what was the audition like? Like they told you to act a scene out of some sort? Like, do you remember what the scene was like or what was it like? Yeah, I remember it was, um, I was given a, a page with a whole, whole bunch of dialogue on it. And the guy said, just memorize that the best you can. And I thought, that's, that's a whole page. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And it was like a monologue kind of thing. I thought, oh my goodness, could you not? I get whatever, you know. Like that's 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 a big ask right there for anyone. I don't know anybody who could memorize it. Anyway, I sat there for probably fifteen or twenty minutes before I got called in because the place where I was auditioning was so busy. Um, it was just there were people everywhere, and um, they weren't all auditioning. I'm sure even for Red Dead Redemption. But even some of them that were weren't auditioning for the role of John. So it was just, it was a madhouse, a lot going on. And uh, by the time I got into the room, I really felt pretty confident that I had actually memorized that page of dialogue. And so I got in there beside the camera. Like if the, if the camera was my face, then beside it was this big white piece of paper with the dialogue written on it. He said, if you need to, you can reference this, uh, but try and just, you know, show that you memorized it. And also you're not going to just say the lines. There was a table in front of me that had clothes on it, like that were folded. And he said, so the last person did a good job of folding the clothes, but couldn't, couldn't remember the lines. So took the clothes and scattered them all around and got them all messed up. And he said, so yeah, just, just try and fold those clothes and talk directly to camera and uh, say those lines. And the lines were like, it's talking, it was clearly a man talking to a woman uh, saying how much he enjoyed her apple pie and how he would love to be able to hang out longer, but he's got to leave town. People know that he's here. You could tell he was kind of a bad guy, whatever, but it was, none of it was uh, part of the story from Red Dead Redemption. It was just, it was, they wanted to see, you know, like, I guess what you sound like, uh, obviously what your voice sounds like. Are you able to memorize lines and are you able to perform tasks while you're saying your lines? And so somehow, somehow, the first take that I did, I, th I think I got all the lines right. I don't know for sure, but I'm, I think I got them all right. And I, I didn't fold all of the clothes, but I got through like three quarters of them. Can't say they were folded really well, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got done and the, and the guy running the camera said, all right, great. That was really great. So um, that's really great that you, that you got that far into it um, and did that well, but that's not exactly what they're looking for. And so he gave me some changes to make. Mm -hmm. And then he said, all right, I gotta, I gotta leave the room cause I gotta go check on something real quick. And then when I come back, we'll do it again. You'll have those changes made and it'll be great. And so I said, all right, okay, cool. So I felt pretty good, you know, because I thought, all right, good. And I, and I think I understand the changes you want me to make. I'm ready. So the guy comes in five minutes later and when he comes in, he's got another actor with him and he, and he walking in, he's telling the other actor like, yeah, so here's what we're going to do. And he looks and sees me and almost like, Oh, like <laughs> he completely, it's clear that he completely forgot that I was even in the room. And so uh, I'm standing there and I'm looking at this other actor and the other actor is like, Oh shoot, you, is it your turn? And I said, well, I got it. And the, the camera guy then cut me off. and was like, you know what? I'm so sorry. We're so busy. We've got to keep moving. What you did was great. Really appreciate, appreciate you coming in all that stuff and kind of rushed me out the door. And I left there thinking, man, I'm so mad. I had it. I had the, I know that I could do that better. I know I could do it right. And, and I just, I was so bummed out for the next all the way home and in the next few hours, I'm sure just thinking that was really, I can't believe that guy forgot I was in there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, it was just a, it was that crazy of a, of a night in this casting place. And so 
when when I realized that I had booked the role and was speaking with the director, he told me that um, they actually had specific people in mind for the role. And I don't know. I didn't ask him who. But he said, you know, like some some well-known actors we had in mind for this role, and it didn't work out for any of them. We couldn't get together with any of them on and agree on terms and all the different things. And so we opened it up. And uh, I think it's better that we got you. I mean, he's telling me, I think it's better that we got you. I think you're going to be better than the other people we had in mind anyway. It's, it's going to be great. And I thought, awesome. Thank you. I have no idea. Still, I, I knew at that point it was a video game. And I knew it was like a, a GTA cowboy version, kind of. Uh-huh. But I, I don't I don't know enough about video games to know at all what I'm doing. I'm I'm happy to be here. You know, I just thought, oh my goodness. But I told him my experience in the audition, and he was like, oh my gosh, man, those guys. A lot of times, those people that that run those sessions and and run that, they don't have any idea what they're talking about. I don't know why. And I thought, okay, that makes me feel a lot better. It was just uh, he said, you what you did was perfect. That's why you're here. And I said, okay, great, thanks. I, who knows? Who knows, man? But that's that's the experience I had. It was uh, not real straightforward, I guess. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's really interesting how uh, how weird it was and how you kind of thought you didn't get it and then you got surprised that you got it in the end, right? That's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> that's how it went. It's wild. Yeah. So, um, what was it like, like working for Rockstar? Like, how was the what was kind of like the big picture? Like, how how did it all just kind of go over, basically? Well, um, so one thing, even, even right, so the technology, the, any kind of technology, as you know, technology gets better and better and better, faster and faster and faster, right? Mm-hmm. And so, if you think back to 2008 or whatever it was when we started doing Red Dead Redemption. You know what? I can tell you because oh, it doesn't have a year on it. Anyway, I've got a script back here that was given to me by the Steve J. Palmer who played Bill Williamson in both Red Dead and Red Dead 2, and it's got a date on it. It's the very first scene that we shot, and it's, it says January 19th, Monday. But I don't know. I guess that was 2008. I'm guessing that's when that was. Anyway. Okay. Um, the technology then was was not quite as good. It was, or I guess, not at all as good as it is now. Mm-hmm. It's probably even better since I've seen it in five years. I'm sure it is. But we wore the same performance capture suit, which looks like a, a wetsuit, basically. Um, I don't know. You've seen it, I'm sure, right? You know what that looks yeah, like? Yeah, yeah. It's got the, the dots and stuff all over it. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So basically, so all of that, all of that was brand new to me. I had never even seen that stuff before. And I didn't know how it worked. Um, but Rockstar is really, really good at, at recognizing most people aren't going to know what this is that we're doing. They don't know what performance capture is. They don't know how to perform when they don't know where the camera is because like if you're doing a tv show or a movie or even a commercial you know where the camera is you know right where it is and you have to kind of play to the camera Uh and then you know they'll move and do different angles of the same shot you know so they can get but in a video game doing performance capture i shouldn't say a video game performance capture is used in movies now a lot too but you anyway there's no camera There's no camera. You're in this crazy wetsuit looking thing. uh, And you're, you're supposed to be acting out these scenes as these rough, tough cowboys. Right. So they, they have a good way of making everyone feel very comfortable and very at home with it. And um, so I guess the, the very first thing that I would say is that they're very um, knowledgeable and they're very considerate and they're very patient and so you realize right away okay this is new but i'm i'm fully supported by the people that i'm working with if if this doesn't feel natural to me at first they're aware that it probably won't they don't 
They don't put pressure on anyone. They don't make anyone feel silly. They they take the time that everyone needs to to be comfortable. And then and then once you get comfortable, they really do a good job of explaining what it is that they want out of these characters. And and I'm telling you that because I, when I was given my script, <coughs> excuse me, for Red Dead and Red Dead 2 and Undead Nightmare for that matter, I wasn't given the script in its entirety. I was given it only in sections. And those sections that I received weren't in order. So um, I it took me a long, long time to know who is John Marston. I don't. I can't like read the script and understand who this character is. I don't know what he's motivated by. I don't know because I don't have the whole story. So Rockstar does a really, really good job of saying, all right, so in this scene, here's what we're doing. You're really angry. You can probably tell by the dialogue, but you're really angry. And, and here's why. And then, so then they fill you in as, as you need to be filled in. But, um, the performance that I gave in Red Dead Redemption, uh, I made, I moved around, and you heard my voice. I memorized the lines. I said them out loud. But that really, ultimately, is Rod Edge, our director's performance. He told me, "Okay, you did it that time. At this point, I want you to do it a little bit different. You'll understand why later. This is how I want you to do it." And it's kind of fascinating that. It adds a whole different level of responsibility to his job because normally an actor will have already read the entire script and they know the story. When they don't, and they're there ready to shoot, someone's got to explain to them, this is what you're doing and this is why. And so it's, um, it's a very... Um, it's a very cool environment like i said you feel supported you feel encouraged um and they recognize that it's not it's not normal really in any way um of course once you do it for a while then it becomes like yeah this is i get this and i love it um but yeah i think i think that's the way that i that i felt and i know that once i was comfortable I know that I recognized it when they were doing that with other people and making sure first you need to be comfortable. You need to, you need to be confident and, and we're going to do this and we're going to get the best that we can out of this whole situation because we're all aware that there's a whole lot that we don't understand as far as actors go, whatever. And so, um, I think that really stands out from, from the beginning of it. That stands out the most. And then throughout the entire series that I worked on, one of the things that I noticed about Rockstar that stands out so much to me is that, because I, like we talked about, I've had a whole lot of different jobs, right? Try to be an actor. I've been a bartender. I've been this, that, whatever. I've done a lot of different things. Even now, I just changed jobs again. But Rockstar has, has shown me what it looks like to have really talented, really motivated people who are very supportive of each other. Of course, they were all cool to the actors because they kind of have to be, right? I mean, you can't have people from the production company be a jerk to an actor. That's just, that wouldn't work. They would get fired. It's too, it's Hollywood. Protect, protect the actors, the precious actors, right? <laughs> so... Uh, but so of course they were all cool to us, but they were cool to each other too. It was genuine. It felt genuine, you know, and, uh, it was really, I, I love, I love the word inspiring, but I'm so inspired by what I saw because I know that it's possible that people can work together and they can be cool to each other and supportive to each other. And I want everyone to be able to experience that in their lives because it's, amazing to to see what a group of talented people can do when they work together and feed off each other in a positive way it's that's that's the result that you get when you buy a rockstar game that's that's why you get that result it's, they're 
really got it figured out. Yeah, it sounds like a great experience, honestly. So, uh, yeah, so you, I'm assuming you got along really well with your uh, your fellow cast members in the first and second game, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we all, you know, we were all uh, excited to be there. There are some people in the cast that are huge gamers, mm -hmm. and were they could not believe how lucky they were to be in these in these casts, right? Whether it be the first one or the second one. Um, overwhelmed with joy by the fact that they were able to work with Rockstar Games and on Red Dead Redemption, the series, they, there were people that were really, really excited about that. But uh, I think we all, we all realized that we were, we were in a really great opportunity to uh, be part of something that's, that's big. And uh, we all were motivated to do our very best. And we, we, probably learning from what we saw Rockstar do were very encouraging to each other and, and supportive. And I'm telling you, it's, it was, I've never seen anything like that before in any job that I've worked in. And I've never seen it since where it seemed like everyone was into it and excited about it and it felt good about every aspect of it. Um, so yeah, it was great. And then also, yeah, I would still have a text chain. Even today, there's like 15, 20 cast members on there. And we all text each other almost every day. Wow. About yeah. And it's great. And then, you know, so I consider them to actually be like friend. They are my friends. And we all met because of this great experience, but we're still friends. It's awesome. It's so fun. That's really great to hear. Yeah. So it sounds like you had like a, a really like a really great time. It's a really unique experience. It sounds like to you. Uh, do you ever get like tempted to, to like go back to like acting to go back into maybe another video game or something like that? Or <laughs> yeah, I think you know once you uh, once you get a taste of it and you really experience what it's like to to be able to work in that environment and enjoy it. And it's it's a challenge too. I mean, you know, it's not. It's not always easy. Sometimes the scenes don't require a whole lot of effort. You don't have to memorize a whole lot of lines or whatever. But um, I loved the work, loved it. And I don't know that I've ever had a job that I've enjoyed that much. Again, I think a lot of that had to do with the people I was surrounded by. Um, but I really did. I really enjoyed it. And I would love to do it again. Um, I, I think that, you know, Circumstances are very different now for me than they were when I moved to LA. I was single. I mean, that girlfriend that I told you about, I, she and I broke up. I mean, that was like my college girlfriend. And, and it wasn't like we were ever going to get married. It's when I moved to LA, I was single. I had no one to worry about but myself. Um, and so now, you know, I, I've got a wife and I've got kids. We got a house and, and pets. And it's uh, you know, a lot of times, I guess, if you if you book an acting role, it's it's good financially a lot of times, but during the production of whatever it is that you book, I, I would be gone. I would not be part of what we have around here and and that would be hard on me and it would be hard on my wife and kids and if something comes up that i really can't turn down of course i won't but i'm not actively searching right now for for acting work i'm not trying to find auditions and it's just not my it's not my focus right now so we'll see what happens in the future all right i don't know pretty understandable i i, I get it um yeah. Yeah, so uh, like between LA and New York, did you live in New York when you were doing Red Dead Two, or you were just flying back and forth between uh, Indiana and, and and New York City? It was New York City, right? Yeah, well, yes. Uh, part of it was in Manhattan. There was uh, where their big studio is in Long Island. So when when I was going back and forth, I would stay in Long Island. Sometimes I would stay in a hotel. Sometimes I would stay. They had an apartment rented. Um, and if nobody else was using it, like no execs or no, you know, sometimes they would have me in the apartment, which was always awesome because I would be there for three weeks at a time. 
Um, and you know, things like doing your laundry and instead of eating, uh, fast food or going to a restaurant, whether it be in the hotel or down the road or whatever, every night, you could actually cook something. You had a kitchen. It was a full apartment furnished and you had a fridge and you, you know, it was always better to stay in the apartment. I actually stayed there the majority of the time. I was very fortunate, but I didn't live. It wasn't my apartment. Uh, so I can't say that I actually had an address in New York, but for, for at least two years, straight of the production of red dead two i was in new york more than i was home in indiana so uh yeah i feel like i know that and that i will say too that was in long island i was out there for that part when i went in and worked in manhattan they have a sound booth in manhattan and so i would go out there when i would go out there to do just the stuff in the sound booth i'd go out there for maybe three or four days at a time and uh I, it was awesome i loved i loved being there um i don't know that i could ever live in manhattan it's just non-stop have, have you been there yeah i go there pretty frequently i go i visit the museums every every year and it's just so busy yeah i mean it's definitely you feel the energy of all of that you know all the people moving around and everything going on it just never stops and I, I like that for the time that i'm there but then when i come back to my tiny little town in indiana in the middle of nowhere can really tell like oh i feel i feel so much more relaxed here yeah <laughs> so i think it's great i think everyone should go to new york check it out but i don't know that i would ever want to live in manhattan that may not be my speed i don't think yeah it's quite a busy place and everything <laughs> so um uh how how is your interactions with like your fans and everything like how how's 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 that been over the years could you like uh maybe tell me a little bit about that my goodness man it's it's been so awesome i mean you see all this artwork behind me this is all stuff that's been given to me by people that i've met at conventions who love the game the series um and it's fascinating. I, I think, in fact, I've got something going on now that's new, uh, but I'm really excited about it. I think that there are so many people that I have met who are fans of Red Dead Redemption, who are so talented and so cool. I'm trying now to help kind of highlight some of these people. I'm going to do Instagram lives, and I'm going to link up with these people, and we're going to talk about what it is that they do and what motivates them and what it takes to do what they do, whether it be drawing or singing or whatever it is that they're into. And uh, I'm really excited about that because I'm the lucky one that, that booked a role in a video game that was hugely successful. And so I meet all these people and they're all excited to, to come say hello and share stories about their experience with Red Dead, not only just their own personal experience, but when they've played it and their family has seen it. And because it's so pretty, they all stood around and watched. And then eventually they'd all be on the couch together. And it was a moment where they could all bond and hang out where maybe before they didn't, they didn't find reasons to all sit in the same room and hang out. This made it possible so they could all enjoy each other and have a common interest to be excited about. That's awesome. Uh, all the people that have told me that they've made friends playing Red Dead online. And and maybe, you know, I meet them at a convention or something and they come up to me together and say, we just met today. We've known each other for five years, but today we actually met in person for the first time and now we're meeting you. And I think, my goodness, this is so cool. Um, I'm really, I'm really blown away by a lot of it. And it's something that, you know, when you're in the middle of making a, a video game about cowboys doing the stuff that these cowboys are doing in this game, you never, I don't think it ever crosses your mind that you're going to have people that have such really heartwarming stories to share with you because of the work that you were part of. And, and it's really, really awesome. And, and like I said, too, it's it's been really awesome to meet so many people who have shared their talents 
with me. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna try and help share their talents with. I, I my fan base is bigger. My following is bigger because it's not my fan base. It's Red Dead Redemption's fan base. But I'm gonna try and and uh, spread these people out and let them get some exposure. If I you know if I can, hopefully that's my goal anyway. That's cool. So it's on Instagram. You're gonna be doing this. So you do a little bit of social media stuff on on the side a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I did, <laughs> I did uh, Instagram lives a couple years ago, a couple summers ago, when I built our chicken coop. We've got five chickens out there, and I thought this will be this will be fun. We'll get people involved. We'll uh, build this thing, and I can I can every now and then go on and click on somebody's name, just r- completely random people, and and talk to them see what they got going on that day, whatever. And it's amazing. Some of the people that I've met that, of course, I, I never knew who they were. I had no idea. And, and it's not even like, you know, if it's a guy or a girl that's going to pick up most of the time because people don't use typically their their real name. It's some kind of a nickname that they've given themselves or whatever is their username, whatever. So it was just completely random. And... uh it's some of the stories that I heard and, and interactions I had. It was just a really cool experience. I enjoyed that so much. That factors into what I'm doing now, too. And, in fact, I'm doing one. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The next guest, if I can say that, that I'm, that I'm linking up with is someone that I met. The first time I met her, I happened to click on her when I was doing an instant excuse me, doing an Instagram live building the chicken coop uh-huh. and we've become actual friends at this point. And so, um, you just never know. You just never know what's going to happen with these things, but that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to, uh, make people aware, you know, there are some really cool, really talented people out there and I'm fortunate enough to know them, but I want everybody else to know them too for, for everyone's sake. I think it's I think it's going to be cool. That sounds really cool. Yeah, it sounds uh it sounds like you have a really good re- relationship with your fans. Like uh, you know, it sounds like uh, you know, you talk to them and they appreciate the the time you give to them and it seems uh, really good overall for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I I really enjoy it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so um, you know, you don't really change your voice that much for when you're playing John. It's kind of like just your normal voice, right? So, like, when you're in public and you're just talking to, like, the cashier, does anybody ever just recognize you, like, hear you and be like, oh, my gosh, it's you? Like, does that ever happen to you? You know what? No. I mean, I, so I live, in a, I live in a really small town that I grew up in. Uh-huh. So I think most of the people around here, we all know each other anyway, right? Um, and it's fun. You know, I'll run into people that, that I grew up with who have – kids now who are playing red dead and they'll say hey listen to him you do you recognize who that is and i'll say hey how are you and they'll kind of look at me and be like and then i'll and then i'll say uh my name's john marston and then they're like oh oh my goodness and and then their mom or dad or whatever it's the guy you know so that's fun you know but um for the most part I, i think there was one guy I don't even remember where I was, but I was somewhere for a convention and we stopped into a gas station on the way to the hotel. Uh, I think Peter might've been in this car with me. I can't remember who it was, but this cashier then recognized both of us because he had bought tickets. He was going to the convention. Okay. He knew that we were going to be there. He was a, he was a con guy. He was like, I love conventions and I'm going to be there, but, can't believe you guys are here. We're like, yeah, right on. <laughs> I'd, I'd never really gone anywhere um, outside of, of that and had somebody say, you're the guy that played John Martin. I don't think that's never actually happened. So that, that's surprising. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so, so, so this is your, you're in your chicken coop right now. This is, this was actually like literally a chicken coop that you turn into like, you're kind of, uh, you're kind of like your man cave sort of, right? Yes. So my wife, I don't even know how long ago it was, but I'd say we've lived in this house for like eight years or so. When we first moved here, though, she wanted to get chickens. Mm -hmm. And I thought, 
She also wanted to get cows and goats and all kinds of things. She grew up in LA. So she lived in, in very beautiful homes. She was fortunate um, when she lived in LA, but she never had a yard as big as ours. And so she thinks now that it's not even that big. It's not even honestly that big, especially for this area. Most people have way more property than we do, but she feels like because our yard is so big, we need to have animals. We need to have cows and goats and pigs and all of it. And I thought, ah, I, we don't know anything about that. We're not farmers. <laughs> we don't know how to take care of them. We don't have it. We can't do all that. Well, she said, I know about chickens. I have had chickens before. I want chickens. And I thought, okay, I can't, I can't really argue with that. And I thought, I'm, I'm not going to learn anything about them. And you're going to take care of them. I just need to build the structure. And she said, yes. So where I'm currently sitting is the first chicken coop that we bought or, or used, built. It's, it, chickens were at one point, this was their home. There were 13 of them. And we qu quickly realized that for a family of four, if you just want chickens for yourself, you don't need 13 hens. <laughs> they, in the summertime when they're getting sunlight, and they're warm and all that. However, that works. My wife should be the one explaining this. But they lay an egg. Each chicken lays an egg every day. So it's too many for four people. So we started giving them away. <laughs> then the people that we were giving them away to would say, I'm sorry, we've got too many still. You know, so luckily we found someone who wanted chickens and wanted all of them. And I think because we were so overwhelmed by our experience, we said, yes, please take them all. And so my wife get, got all these chickens to this other person and that other person really enjoyed them and did whatever they did with them. I don't know. But um, we didn't have chickens for, for three or four years and I needed a space to to do social media stuff or, or interviews or whatever. Uh -huh. We really didn't have one. So I said, I'm going to turn that chicken coop into something. I have, I got to have a space. And so I ended up, it took forever to get the smell out. Oh my goodness. They, gosh, chicken stink. They smell so bad. Uh, now it doesn't smell in here at all. I promise you it smells great, but Painted it and painted it. I probably have 15 coats of paint on the inside of this place just to cover up everything. Um, but since since we've had this in place, Taylor said she wanted chickens again. Not 13 this time, but five. Okay. And so built another coop. I'm probably the only person in the world that has two chicken coops, one for actual chickens and one for myself <laughs> but that's that's our setup that's what we got that's cool wow. <laughs> yeah yeah it's an interesting it's cool. story for sure <laughs> yeah yeah all right so yeah it, it's pretty cool that you have those those little space so um i'm trying to think what else to talk about uh do you do you like westerns like do you like western films I do. I I do enjoy them uh, now way more than I than I did before, of course. But I will say, probably my favorite movie, honestly, of all time, the one that I've watched the most mm -hmm. was um, Tombstone. I loved it. I loved that movie, and that was way before I had any idea. I hadn't even thought about moving to L.A. to try and be an actor at that point. But I really, really enjoyed that movie. It's coincidental, I guess, that I ended up booking a role as a character in a video game about cowboys. Um, but I, I knew that, you know, I loved that movie. I loved um, Wyatt Earp, I thought was great. I mean, it's basically the same story, but I thought it was really cool. I like 310 to Yuma, but I didn't know much about spaghetti westerns. And I, I didn't know much. That I just never got into those movies. So um, I learned about them, though, really through Roger Clark, who played Arthur Morgan in Red Dead 2. I, I got a really good education by him 
on spaghetti westerns because it's something that he's always enjoyed and he would sit down and show me on his computer like just check out this scene you got to watch this and it was really it was really awesome so there were some movies that i i got to watch in its entirety because of roger from scenes that he showed me but yeah it's it's interesting a lot of this stuff that we did too and both red dead and red dead 2 paid tribute to a lot of those old western movies and i and i think that's cool i i guess at the time i didn't realize a lot of it what we were doing was was doing that but um there's no doubt when you watch the game if you know those old westerns you say oh this is they've taken this from whatever you know and so it's fun yeah they're they're really similar to those spaghetti westerns because they're pretty it's pretty violent and kind of uh kind of uh uh gruesome so i think that's kind of what they what they got out of it too a little bit of that um I, so so he's a big movie buff uh roger clark then and he kind of uh, showed you a little bit of uh his favorite movies i guess yeah yeah he's he's definitely a, a western buff for sure yeah and i i think yeah he enjoys all movies that's roger is still very active and uh still working he's just won a, a film festival for his short film that just came out and I can't remember the title of it. I, I hate to say that. Um, but he's, he's still working. He's working on, uh, some good stuff. So be excited about Roger. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. 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 So, so like, um, if, if they were like to make a red dead three, what do you think like the, the setting would be? Cause there's a lot of people like always talking about that and they're always like wondering where, where the, where the story's going to go next. Do you have any like ideas for, about that at all? Or, Oh my goodness. I, I, I love to talk about it. I mean, I think now too, because so many characters in red dead redemption two were so well developed, you could go in so many different directions now. Um, I guess, I guess the crazy thing about the, the time, right. They, they said that that was kind of the end of an era, right. Mm -hmm. Red dead was kind of the end of that, wild west era so if you went past that time and it would be almost like you'd see a whole lot more cars and you'd see you know it would be more mo way more modern now and, and it wouldn't be so much of a western game anymore it would kind of change into a different genre i, I would assume we kind of have to um or maybe i'm wrong i don't know but i think that if they did another prequel be really really cool to learn more about blackwater see what happened there it would be uh it would be interesting to know dutch before he met micah it would be interesting you know what i mean it's um uh, for me it's like how how did dutch and hosea too but how did dutch find a way to make that many people believe in him and trust him and want to follow him and stay with him how did he do that because he's not someone that you think like when you see him now like i wouldn't follow that guy anywhere yeah it's crazy <laughs> right? right but he did at one point they all did and and so it'd be interesting to see that side uh but also you've got sadie adler uh who is still alive right at the end of red dead Two, um, Charles Smith. You got Pearson. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like uh, there's a whole lot of things that they didn't exist in Red Dead Redemption, but they could have. And they could, they could definitely have all kinds of different possibilities there. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, one thing that kind of, I, I don't know, just selfishly, I, I would like to think that they would do something that would be at least where it would make sense that John would be old, not old, but as old as he possibly could be and maybe wouldn't be in the game for much of it. But I'd love to be able to work with Rockstar again. I'm afraid if they do a, a prequel again, John may be in it, but he'd be so young. I'm 46 years old. I don't sound like I'm 15. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
So yeah, I, I, guess. I don't. I don't move like I'm 15. It would probably be someone else who would be cast to play John. And if they did that, then of course I would be supportive, as as supportive as anybody could possibly be. But selfishly, I want to be involved in it too. I understand <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> So, so you, you'd like to be in Red Dead 3, like, in some kind of way, maybe like a flashback or anything, right? Whatever they can do. Whatever. Yeah, whatever they can do, of course. I mean, it's, I'd say that the cast, you know, like the cast, we, we are actual friends. Um, but I think that because we worked so long with the people at Rockstar, that we're friends too. I mean, if we got back together, it would be... Just how it is when anybody gets back together with an old friend they haven't spoken to in five years. You pick up right where you left off. You really enjoy the time that you have together, and it's it would be it would be really awesome. I don't interact with Rockstar on a regular basis because I know how busy they are. Mm-hmm. It would be it would be kind of it would be selfish, I would say, for me to reach out to them all the time and be like, "Hey, how you doing? What's going on? You having a good day? Whatever." Like, would just be like, "I know better." I know how busy they are. I know they're focused and I would, I would be a distraction that, that I don't want to be, but it, it would be great to be back with those friends too, you know? So that, that would be a big part of why I would enjoy it so much. Yeah. It, it sounds, it sounds like it would be, um, it would be fun to do it again, you know, as long as it's like not going to take up too much time. Cause I think uh, it took a long time to film the second one, right? It took like a, how many years uh, would you say? I, I think, uh, believe it or not, I think the guy that played Micah Bell mm-hmm. worked the longest, right? Roger Clark, who played Arthur Morgan, obviously, he worked more hour, like more days in between. But Peter Blumquist, I think, was the first person that did any kind of work on Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm not even sure why. And then he worked until almost the very end. Um, and then all his stuff was finished. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Roger, of course he spent the most days there um but yeah it does it takes time it took uh peter i think five years it took me i I might have been there for four from the very first day that i worked until the very last day of course i wasn't there every day like i said i'd be there for three weeks at a time um but sometimes i'd be there for for three weeks and then i wouldn't go back for six weeks you know for a while it was three weeks there two weeks home three weeks there two weeks home that that went on for two solid years of it but yeah uh it does it takes time but i would i would find a way to make it work i mean if if they were doing it in new york then my family and i we would all move to new york probably okay. <laughs> I mean, that's probably what happened for the for the amount of time that it would take yeah I think we would. And I think my wife, she knows how much I love it. She's so supportive when it comes to this kind of thing. She, she'd probably be into it, too. She loves Manhattan, too. She would move to Manhattan. I, I wouldn't, but she, she'd be happy to be close. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's good to see that uh, she supports, uh, she supports uh, what you want to do and everything. So that's nice to hear. Yeah. 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 Really cool. All right. Um, so, uh, who, who's your favorite character in the whole series? Like, who would you say is your favorite character? Oh my gosh, that's so hard to say. I, I really. Oh my goodness, I don't think I can pick. I don't. I really don't think I can pick. And I'm so sorry to just say that, but uh-huh. I want to tell you, it's really difficult to choose someone when, when you know them, you, you actually know the person that played the role. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's really difficult. Uh, I mean, I. I can't pick them all because that's not what you asked me, but I don't think that I could pick anyone specific either. I'm so sorry. That's fine. Uh, that's, a, that's a good answer, actually. Yeah, because it's like it's kind of a surreal when, when you like know everybody, you know, all the characters, like personally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. So I'm trying to think of what else uh, we could talk about. Um, uh, Am I taking up too much of your time? Because I know we've been doing this for about an hour now. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I could, if you got one more, maybe, or or if 
All right. That's probably just our, our, one more thing uh, to, to close off. Is there anything you wanted to say to people who want to get into acting and maybe were inspired by your role, your roles over the years and they want to get into acting? Do you have any like words of encouragement or advice for those kinds of people? That, that'll be the last one. Um, well, I, I think, I think that what you have to do is um, no matter what, no matter what, um, you are being asked to do don't ever, I mean, you're going to be outside of your comfort zone in a lot of different cases for a lot of different reasons. And you have to be willing to do that. And, uh, but don't do anything. Don't do anything that you, that you know that you're going to look back on and really regret. Don't, don't go against your morals to get a job. Don't do, don't, I would say that more than anything is is something that I I would want people to really think about because like me I I promise you I got thrown into this by luck. I mean I just I don't belong. I don't belong in the situation that I'm in. I I didn't do it the way that I don't even know how you're supposed to do it. I, I wish I did. If I did, I would tell everyone and just say just do this. And you got it. But I don't know what that is. I got very lucky and I'm aware of that. But I, I wish that I had more information. I just think it's important. I, I did have some people say, hey, if you'll do this, then we can, you know, we can make this happen. And I thought, as much as I would like to experience the opportunity that you're talking about me being part of, I'm, it's not worth it to me to do some of these things that you're being asked to do. And I, and I, and I just want everybody to have the uh, confidence to say, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. Because if you're, if you're in a position where someone's saying that to you, other opportunities are going to come. So you don't have to uh, go against your morals or anything like that. But otherwise, uh, it, I guess the likelihood of you being at a restaurant or out in public somewhere and some famous well-established director comes near you, the likelihood of that director saying, Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm making a movie and I want you to be the star of it. Are you an actor? Do you have interest in it? That, that doesn't happen. That's never going to happen. You have to put yourself out there. You have to look for work. And when you get an opportunity, you have to you have to do your best and enjoy it, and uh, just go for it. Go for it. Don't expect it to come to you. Go for it. I guess that's the best advice I can give. It's good advice. I, I appreciate that, and I am sure uh, many people will appreciate hearing that as well. So yeah, I uh, I just want to thank you for giving me all the time to talk about your career and what you've been up to and everything. Uh, I really appreciate it uh, being able to talk to you. Um, I think we had a good talk uh, about a lot of different subjects, um, and I guess we'll uh, we'll probably be closing off this. So uh, I'll, I'll plug your socials and everything, uh, you know, so people can follow you on Instagram and see what you're doing and all that. And uh, cool. yeah, so uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this talk I had with uh, with Rob. Uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, hearing from him, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>